Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie. A show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful textural, ambiental, call it whatever you want, music. I'm Andy from Two Round Robins and I hope you're ready for some discussion. Today we're not really patching anything but let's just take our beverage and take some nice leisure time to discuss something that has been recently on my mind. Some may not know this but I teach basic music theory at one of the local multimedia institutes. And one question I, or should I say statement that I get a lot of times from my students is I'm worried that if I understand music theory it will kill all the magic that I get from making music. And at first I really didn't understand the whole fear that comes from this. Usually I answered with a very simple worry not. It shall only enrich your music making experience. And I still do think that. For me learning basics of harmony, rhythm, melody will only give you a sort of guide signs on your little map of exploration. You can see where to go, but the scenery, mood and how you feel while following some guidelines is still the main part that will give you a sense of wonder. However, in recent time, I understand that statesmen of fear far better, those statements that my students made. Recently I've been covering plum butter, uh, an instrument that's full of mystery. Well, at least from the moment you, lays, you lay your eyes on it, I mean, look at it. And having such an esoteric description of it really sells on the whole wonder aspect of this instrument. This is something that intrigued me and it was only, not only with plum butter, I should say, I remember when I first got my OP-1 which kind of also launched this whole ambient side project and exploration for me. I remember being intrigued by a groove box that works in such a different way from a typical grid, quantized drum, song making, run-of-the-mill song making instrument like a digital audio workstation which I was very much accustomed to. It was different and it was the first gear I owned that really pushed me into making music. How it kind of forced me into thinking about music in very very different ways. And I remember it wasn't just the OP1's ability to drive its users to be more creative while incorporating just the right amounts of limitation. It was also the mystery aspect of it and me feeling like I should crack the code and really understand this machine. And once I did, at least the exploration part or the aspects of this machine, it kind of vanished, disappeared. Now don't get me wrong, I, I still love my OP1. Uh, as you can see, I do have my original OP1, I got it second hand. And I still use it almost every day. But the element of mystery that firstly intrigued me, and it was very unique in, in that sense, is, dare I say it, gone. So it's not here anymore. And then I started thinking and doing research uh, into other gear, into other elements of equipment that would give me this sense of mystery. And I was blown away by Manome or Manom Norns. Here, as you can see, I have a Norns shield. And this is the most amazing little music computer. I checked what people made with it and was very intrigued, especially with, ki with the kind of music that they were doing. So yes, obviously I jumped the ship, I, I bought in. And, you know, I was so amazed how vast it is 
how how it incorporates the different scripts and each script has its own little unique feature and most importantly its script has its own mystery element of it you know it it's it kind of looks as a terror especially let's say for with this script which is just generating some tones called flora and it feels like a lovely mixture of a creative tool and a riddle at the same time and now coming back to CL gear you know like Coco Quantus or Blum Butter it's quite obvious what I was most enchanted by so thinking back when I made those explorations or should I say explanations into the Blum Butter I often thought whether that's a good thing or not. Even though I still try not to give too much away, uh, I ask myself now, am I destroying this, the wonder, the mystery of this beautiful instrument by explaining stuff a bit too much? Is, am I destroying or spoiling the first experience that the user might have when they sit down and get something like this in front of it, in front of him or her. And am I spoiling the music making scenery with far more detailed guide signs than there should be? So this is something that I'm still not sure of. This is something that kind of makes me think about doing stuff like this. So, I know this was a rather short talkie. I hope you enjoyed it as well, even though we didn't patch anything. It was just more, it was just basically me monologuing about how to, how to feel about exploration into these wonderful machines, how to, and how to relay the information of the machines from one side to the other and whether or not we're spoiling that. So if anybody is willing to chime in on the subject about the mystification or the mystifying, you know, synth gear or instruments or whatever, feel free to leave a comment below. Let's get a discussion started. I'll try to, I'll try to respond to each and every one. I'm not getting that much comments either way, so it doesn't really bother me. I have time to, to keep the discussion going. <laughs> so otherwise, if you made it this far, congrats. And I would like to give you a nice thank you for that. So see you soon in the next talkie. And if you like, such content please subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment a like or whatever but take care and thank you for sticking around